Welcome back to Fantasy Football Tankers Edition here. Today, talk about the AFC North. So, we got the Bengals. We got them Pittsburgh Steelers. We got the Ravens. What's going on here, Aaron? We got some dumb mistake by the lake. We got some Cleveland Browns. First, we got some headlines. We're always kicking off with some of these headlines. And now, as you may know, Teddy Bridgewater is done for the season in dramatic fashion. I mean, I heard there was even teammates vomiting out there on the practice field because the injury was just so grotesque. I mean, the guy, like, dislocated his knee and tore his ACL just dropping back to throw a pass. He, they talked about how he was lucky not to lose his leg. I mean, my goodness, how terrible was this? <laughs> and for me... I don't even know if this necessarily hurts the Vikings' playoff chances, really. I mean, Sean Hill can go in there and be a game manager, which I'm not sure he can do. But if he can go in there and game manage, I mean, I think the Vikings still got a chance to win the NFC North. I mean, if I was them, I might start knocking on the Cleveland Browns' door and asking about old Josh McCown. They're, I know they're asking at least a fourth rounder from a from a cow. Uh, that's pretty, pretty steep. steep. That's pretty steep, but the Cleveland Browns know that the Vikings are desperate and they're trying to squeeze every drop <laughs> out of that old old dirty, old shriveled orange uh, uh, Josh McCown <laughs> out there. <laughs> but really, it's how good of a handoff can you give to Adrian Peterson? Yeah, that's that's about, the that's resume that you need for that's the Vikings. That's about it, yeah. We only threw over 14 touchdowns last year, four of which came in a week, came against the Chicago Bears in one week. I mean, that's almost a third of a touchdown, Bears. What are we doing out there? God goodness sakes. What do you think about Stefan Diggs? Uh, I think you got to take down everybody on the Vikings down a notch. I mean, even Adrian Peterson. I mean, if there wasn't dudes in the box, I mean, there wasn't eight, nine dudes in the box with Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, there's going to be with Sean Hill. I mean, there probably was before with Teddy B. But now, I mean, they might not even move up. A, they might even go to the nine and ten situation. Like, just have one safety out deep and just, we'll just fill the box. And if this bum can throw it to Stefan Diggs and Con Treadwell and the, and the dirty Rudolph. bums of Rudolph and the Cordell. Patterson, oh my goodness! I mean, I think if you, put, I, I mean, I might, I might get crazy. Might go eleven in the box, just force their hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the AFC North here. We got some studs. Do we, do we have studs? Oh, they got some studs there in the AFC North, and we did off with the studliest in the land. Antonio Brown. Oh, this guy is off the chain, people. Completely off the chain. Number one pick, standard or PPR. If you know what you're doing, get Antonio Brown. This man, this guy, he's going out there. He's his godlike numbers. He had an average of 125 receptions in the last three seasons. I mean, my goodness, an average almost 1,700 yards in those three seasons as well. 1,700 yards? That's incredible. Averaging. My averaging at least 10 touchdowns in that span, too. And if you're in these leagues that, you know, give you these six points for these random punt return touchdowns, this guy's even getting you one of those in each of the last three seasons. I mean, my guy, he's doing everything. Jack Well trades out to return punts for touchdowns, catching 125 balls for 1,700 yards and over 10 touchdowns. My God, this guy is incredible. I mean, if I was the Pittsburgh Steelers, I wouldn't let him get him anywhere near special teams. I mean, what are you doing out there, Steelers? I mean, I know he offers you. I guess if it's like, you know, it's, it's our it's last late chance. late in the season and they need a win, you throw him out there in the fourth quarter kind of but thing. But other than that, just get a guy out there that can fair catch for you and then get Antonio Brown out there in the huddle because that's where you need him to be. Not back there trying to get hurt catching, catching punts. I mean, what are you doing, Steelers? And this last year alone, this guy's crazy. He had almost 200 targets last year, 136 receptions, 1,834 yards and 10 touchdowns. And this was, I mean, Berg went down for four games. And those first three games that Berg wasn't there, I mean, he did bad. And it was 9.2, it was 7.5, and it was 5.4, which is very grotesque. But in those other 13 games that he wasn't grotesque, this guy was going out there and averaging you. 
30 fantasy points in PPR a game in those other 13 games? What are we even talking about here? 30 fantasy points a game average in 13 games? My goodness, that's incredible. It's downright incredible. 10, 10 games of 100 yards, 12 games of 6 receptions or more. He had seven games with nine receptions or better. I mean, my goodness, that's almost half the season with, with almost double-digit catches. With almost double-digit catches. And if it wasn't for those three games where he was doing nothing out there, what did he, he even have throwing the ball out there? Michael Vick at first? I mean, oh, God. I don't know, God. And Just that, think about his numbers. If, if we would have had Bird for 12 – or for, for 16 games, I mean, 1,800 yards on 136 catches – with pedestrians for weeks out there. I mean, if you would have had Berg for 16 games, this guy would have easily shattered 2,000 yards in my eyes. He would have set NFL records last year if Berg would have played 16 games. I mean, he's only 166 yards off that mark as it is. With and that's with three single-digit games Three single-digit games, and two of them are bad. He's 7.5 and, and 5.4. I mean, that's very unsafe. But like I said, thir the other 13 weeks, he averaged 30 fantasy points a game. I mean, that's incredible. Like, that's what's even happening out there. Like, he's averaging a great week. He's averages a great week. I mean, a lot of these players, most of these dudes don't even go out there and get you one 30-point week a season. This guy's going out there averaging that? <laughs> averaging? Just downright incredible. Now we got another incredible receiver out of the north to talk about. Uh, he's not as blockbuster main event and show-stopping as Antonio Brown is, but he's got... If you're looking at stability... Over season spans, this guy, he's just, he's incredible. He's had five seasons where he's been over a 1,000 yards. He's only been in the NFL. He's only played five seasons. So, yeah, every year, he's got a 1,000 yards. I mean, even as a rookie, he went out there and churned up a 1,000 yards for you. And has had 10 touchdowns or more in three of the four past years here. I mean, that's just great. I mean, he only had, a, I mean, 140 targets is good. But when we're talking about dudes that are in, like, the top seven or eight receivers, like we said last show, I mean, these other guys are averaging 188 targets, 186 targets. 200 even. And he's only getting 140. I mean, we got Muhammad Sanu leaving town. We got Ma Marvin Jones, Jones leaving town. We got Tyler Eifert, Eifert talking out. about at, mm, earliest week four. I mean, I'm saying week five or week six at the earliest. They were talking about that. You and know, Coach Beak's always a little deluded. And they've always and they've already said that they do not expect any more catches out of Giovanni Bernard, who is the PPR back in the system. I mean, I don't see any way that AJ Green's don't go. AJ Green's targets don't go up by thirty or forty. I mean, we might be looking at 170, 180 targets, and I don't see how we can't be. I, I think we're looking at career year for AJ. I think it has to be. I mean, if they're good, if the Bengals are going to compete at all, they're going to have to. The offense is going to have to go through A.J. Green. I know Jeremy Hill and Gio Bernard are doing a little bit out there for you, but A.J. Green is the heart and soul. Right now, he's being he's the first receiver drafted behind your three studs in Antonio Brown, Julio, and Odell. Yeah, I think that's rightful spot, and that's where I got him ranked. I got him ranked my fourth, fourth overall player off the board and fourth ranked wide receiver. And the guy had five games over 23.8 or better last year, which isn't show stopping. That's pretty solid. He had a huge, amazing week for you, week three. Running out of 48.7. I mean, that's almost winning. 50 points. I mean, that's winning you that. I mean, you won that week because of AJ Green. I mean, if you had anybody out there, you won that week. Ridiculous. Yeah, I th I think his targets are going nowhere but up. I think he's just I think it's if he's on the field for 16 games. I think he's going to have the season of his lifetime here. Oh, and that was with Rifle missing a bunch of games last year, too. I mean, how A.J. Many... McCarron throwing a the ball. A.J. McCarron was getting it done. He was still getting it done with A.J. McCarron out there. I mean, if Rifle's playing 16, which he usually does, last year was just kind of like a fluke injury for the old Red Rifle. But, I mean, he, if he's out there, I mean, I'm talking 180 targets easy for this guy. How could it not be? How could it not be, Bengals? All right, the next stud we got here. No, I'm not necessarily, I mean, I'm not 100%. This guy's only had one 16-game season in his career. I know his career's not that long, but, I mean, that's not very savory. And we're talking about Le'Veon Bell. I mean, these only 16-game season, he had over 2,200 total yards. 83, 83 catches. 83 receptions. running back. 
with 11 touchdowns and 400 yard games. Now that's pretty solid. I mean, the guy had 300 yard games last year. He only played six games, and five of which he only he only completed five of them. And four of those games, he had four catches or more. This guy is a PPR machine when he's out there on the field. I mean, those five games that he actually completed for you, he averaged 20 fantasy points in PPR. I mean, that's pretty solid. I mean, that's RB1 numbers anywhere you write it up. Hell, this dude's problem is he just needs to lay off the dope, maybe answer his phone a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, maybe keep the injury bug down. But if not that, I mean, I don't see there's any reason why this guy can't be a number one running back in PPR if he can stay healthy. I mean, if he can play those, I mean, if he plays those 13 games, he could be the, he could easily be the number one back for those 13 weeks. Easy. He could still be the running back, number one running back on the season for only playing 13 yeah, weeks. Yeah, there's no reason why he couldn't be if he keeps up this. I mean, if he does what he did in that year, he played 16 games and 83 receptions. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, we got moving on to some bombs. Oh, oh, we got a dirty one now. We got that dirty one. Oh, uh, we not time to bust out the shovel. Oh, we might bust out the golden shovel on this bum. <laughs> We just these bumps. These bumps. Oh, this these backfield bumps. of bums. Oh, oh, backfield deserves <laughs> a shovel. And I know we're talking, and you know we're talking about that Cleveland Brown backfield. We're talking about a guy in the crow. <laughs> who, you know, last year, and we're not talking about, like, that cool crow from, like, that movie in the 90s where he was, like, you know, an undead slasher. We're talking about Isaiah Crowell, who is a complete bum. I mean, this guy averaged 8.5 points a game last year. That's woof territory. That is woof. The guy only had 19 receptions, so if you're in PPR leagues, I mean, he's barely going one over one reception a game. That's nothing. He had one game over 100 yards. One game over 100 yards. Only three games over 70 <laughs> yards. I mean, my goodness, the guy had 204 touches. 204 touches through this dirty bum, and he only got you 137.8 fantasy points? I mean, we're talking about .66 points a touch here. That is that is gross. That is unsavory. Oh, just, it's so bad. Just when we thought that was bad, there's two backs in that backfield there's that are two just bombs. as bad. And this other bum, people are like, I don't know, he's got value. He's going to take over this backfield. So what? So what if he takes over the It's backfield? not going to be hard. Yeah, these two, I mean, look at I mean, We're going to tell you what both these guys have done, and so what? I mean, the guy, this guy, Duke Johnson, he only had one game last year where he had 100 total yards. We're not talking about rushing yards. We're talking about receiving and rushing combined. And this guy had 61 receptions, so he was catching footballs. And he only had one game over 100 total yards. I mean, that's golden <laughs> shovel. I mean, that's golden shovel right there. The guy only had two touchdowns. My goodness. I mean, I know he has slight PPR upside, but where he's going in drafts is completely unsavory. Like, I wouldn't even think about the guy. I mean, who's going? He's who, going in the sixth round. Going in the sixth round. If you're looking at running backs around him, I mean, this is this is a bit of a wasteland here and for running backs. Let's go, Giovanni Bernard. Go like, go like three rounds later, I'll probably take all those guys over him. <laughs> he's going in the sixth. Let's look at the ninth. TJ I mean, seriously, Yeldon. give me TJ Yeldon over him right now, and I'm serious. <laughs> Christine We're Michael. talking about a much better offensive football team. And, I mean, the guy, I mean, he's got Chris, I mean, Chris Ivory's better than Isaiah Crowell, but so what? I mean, I think TJ Yeldon's abilities and his upside is just way better than Duke Johnson. Even Christine Michael or Bill Powell in the 10th. I mean, if you're looking for a guy that could win you fantasy leagues, I mean, Christine Michaels, I'd, I'd take Christine Michael over Duke Johnson. I mean, if Christine Michael takes over that backfield, he can actually do something with it. I mean, if Duke Johnson takes over the Cleveland backfield, so what? He turns into, like, a middling RB, RB3 or something? Like, who cares? <laughs> he only had 3.6 yards. A carry 3. last 6 year. 3.6 yards a carry. I mean, people are out there, like, hating on hating on Matt Jones, who also had 3.6 yards a carry, but for some reason, Duke Johnson's, like, immune to the hate? Because he, what, what, he plays for a good football team like the Cleveland Browns? <laughs> That's crazy. Just crazy. These bums are filthy. Oh, my goodness. And we still... Uh, There's still another bum I'm going to leave the shovel out there for this bum, because this bum deserves it. And we're talking about Mike Wallace. And Mike Wallace has had, he's at his third home in three seasons. 
So apparently, nobody likes the guy. I mean, the guy hasn't had a thousand yard season since he left the Steelers. And when the Steelers, the Rooney family was like, ah, you know, we'll let you walk. We're going to pay this guy Antonio Brown instead. And people are like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Mike Wallace is your playmaker. You know, and look, the Rooney family knows everything and nobody else knows because that's what's up here. I mean, the Rooney family showed you. They're like, oh, nah, we're just going to pay this guy instead. You get out of town, you bum. They're like, what are you doing? Mike Wallace is good for a football team. It was like, look, look at what the Rooney family knew. They got Antonio Brown. He's a man beast. A man. A man. 125 receptions. Average 1,700 yards. Average over the last three years. Mike Wallace. You know what he's done? You know how many touchdowns Mike Wallace has scored in those last three years? Five. Five total touchdowns last year. He had four touchdowns the first year he left. He had one after that. And he had a big goose egg up in Minnesota last year. Ridiculous. <laughs> he's awful. I mean, he's I, awful. Know, I know he's got Joe Flacco, who's got one of the biggest guns out there when it comes to chucking the rock far. But still... I mean, I'm not. I mean, Drew. Bre I don't think. I don't think Joe Flacco's cap capable of resurrecting the dead like Drew Brees was with Ben Watson. And that's what it's going to take to get a bum like Mike Wallace to perform for you. You're going to have to resurrect the dead. He's going to have to start training in the black arts out there. He's going to have to be. A, he's going to have to start necromancing. He's going to have to start getting him a, a black robe and a little red mark on it in order to bring this bum up. I mean, I think he's dead to the world. Let's get these bums out Let's of here. Let's get the bums out of here. Let's talk about some put stock the, risers here. Put the shovel here. away. Put the shovel away, that filthy bums. One of the sexiest picks that you can make, but it's steep in the fifth round right now. Oh, we're talking about pick of second the pick in the fifth. The stock just... I mean, I swear to God, the guy caught one ball in preseason for a touchdown, and he jumped three rounds. It was incredible. Josh Gordon Josh out there. Josh Gordon. Caught two catches for, like, 80 yards one preseason oh, game. Oh, I mean, I mean, this guy, people are just, you know, and they just keep remembering that 2013 season. They're like, man, he was so good for me. And what if? Just what if it could happen again? And if it does, people, if I mean, these does. numbers are insane. This guy, I mean, he only played 14 games because, you know, he's all, he's on the dope or whatever. But, you know, he's got 10 games for over 80 yards in that season. Then two games back-to-back -back weeks. He had 498 yards in two games. That is insane. Like, that's NFL record. And in four weeks, weeks, or better than that, weeks 11 through 14, he had 774 yards. That's almost 200 yards a week. That's that's godlike territory for the for the Cleveland Browns. Like, how is he even doing it out there? Just winning people leagues left and right in 2013. And he was averaging 23 points that season that he was in there. But then, the dope. Because this guy, you know, I mean, he came back for those five games in 2014, and people were all hyped up about that. But he only had one 100-yard game and no touchdowns that entire in those entire five games he played. Three games over 50 yards. Three games over 50 yards. I mean, he had the 100-yard game, and he only got two of the other four games over 50 yards. I mean, that's not doing anything. I mean, if he's any, I mean, if he's anywhere close to what we saw in 2014, that second round. I mean, that second pick in the fifth average draft position is completely unsavory. I mean, this guy, I mean, it's been almost three years, people, since this guy was show stop and main event. But he has looked good in preseason. In preseason, he has. Uh, I mean, I just. Uh, but I'm still not paying a fifth round. Because if you're paying a fifth, you're pretty much set, drafting him in your starting lineup. And this is a guy who's going to be missing four games. He better not get back on that dope. Because, because draft, him in the, out. draft him in the fifth round might cost you the season if he gets back on that dope. One and more, he's out. I mean, and we mean out, he's out. He's, he's out. already had his season ban, so he's out of the league. I don't know, that's a steep price for a guy that has that many red flags in, in my eyes. We got another riser. And this guy's not necessarily rising because I think he's a good, he's a great football player. He's incredibly he, he talented. He finished pretty good down the stretch, but... I mean, yeah, he had five of his last game, five of his last eight games last year. He had over ten points, and that's pretty good for a guy who's playing third fiddle to Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant. We're talking about Marcus Wheaton here, and he had a huge week 
against how did he do it in, it Seattle? in Seattle even he had 35 point week in PPR in Seattle how did he do it <laughs> how did he do it I mean that's crazy I mean he appears to have the opportunity because they've demoted Sammy Coates and I mean this Eli Rogers has taken his place and I don't think that guy's anything so the guy at Sammy Coates who we thought was going to be the next Martavis Bryant for at least this season I mean, if he's getting demoted behind guys like Eli Rogers, apparently Marcus Wheaton is is in no danger of losing to second targets on this football team. And for this price, he's getting drafted in the eleventh round. If Le'Veon Bell's out three weeks, and you know they're gonna throw the ball, I mean, the second guy behind Antonio Brown, he can make some serious headway here. If him and Roethlisberger get some chemistry, he can be a serious threat. As a flex play, drafting him in the 11th round. Yeah, I think his ceiling is like a wide receiver three out there, like a flex play. I, I don't think this guy has any means going to be like a top 10 no. receiver, no matter how the Grim Lap system aligns. I mean, I don't even think that's in the cards like at all. But I think he could, I mean, he's getting these targets from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I think he could be a solid flex play out there. I mean, I'd wait and see a few weeks just to test the waters, but... If it seems, if it's feeling nice, I mean, I, I'm, I'd pencil him in my flex for sure. For, for 11th round, I think he's one of the best guys you can get. I think him and, like, Vincent Jackson and St- old Steve Smith are going right in those, right in that round. And I think wheaton has got the most upside out of those three guys by far. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean nah, he's going to be on the field the most. I mean, I mean. I mean, Steve Smith's talking about walking off the field after he yeah, gets. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Steve Smith is undraftable. Like... People don't don't even mess with that. That's that's ridiculous. This dude's talking about literal. This guy's talking about abandonment. He's talking about <laughs> abandonment. He's gonna walk off the field, and you're like willing to still draft him? That's crazy. <laughs> All right, hit some fallers. Put those arrows down for you. We'll point them down. You know. Our first faller, who I actually love. Got drafted around the second round last year, but has fell as low as the sixth round, but he's back up he's to that back fifth up round to that fifth, He's showing up in preseason, touching the end zone like he likes to do. But he's fell to a point where I feel comfortable with him 100% at his fifth round price. I mean, Jeremy Hill, I don't think there's any way he can't be an RB2 for you. And that's, I mean, the fifth, sixth round, I mean, that's what the price is, is RB2. I think he'll be a solid RB2. I mean, he had 12 total touchdowns last year. And he only had one game over 20 points. And with 12 touchdowns, one game over 20 points is pretty lackluster. Very touchdown dependent first couple years in the league here. I had 10.6 points a game, I mean, which is decent. But, I mean, he had a really, really bad year last year. I mean, let's get into how bad of a year he had last year. I mean, he only had, he had eight weeks with 11 or better, which is pretty solid. But in those other eight weeks, he had eight points or less. And when five of those eight weeks that were eight points or less, he had five points or less, and that is gross. <laughs> he could give you next to nothing on a weekly basis. I mean, but, in those eight games I was just talking about where he had 11 points or more, he averaged you 16 points, which, you know, that's pretty good. Which well, RB2, that's all you can Very ask for. Very good. Well, then, <laughs> in those other eight games, he averaged you 4.7 points in PPR. <laughs> so it was feast or famine to the definition to the T. I mean, this guy was getting you 16, or he was getting you 4. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Even in one game, he had nine carries and three touchdowns. Nine <laughs> carries and three touchdowns. I mean, that's crazy. Like, how is that even happening? That was the only game he went over 20 points, too. He had nine carries. He had nine carries and he had over 20 points because he turned a third of his carries into falling into the damn end zone. How did he do it? How did he accomplish it? I mean, that's talking like Stephen Davis of seven or eight years ago out there. Like, how did he even, how did he even manage these things? I mean, the guy had 0.7 points a touch, which isn't very good on 12 touchdowns. That's like to crow. That is very bad with 12 touchdowns. I mean, 12 touchdowns, you only have 0.7 points a touch. I mean, like I said, half of his weeks he scored, he averaged 4.7 points in PPR. I mean, that is gross. And he had less than a point a touch last year, too. Or in 2014. Or 2000. Yeah, or yeah, not last year, but the year before. And he still got you nine touchdowns. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he was right around point nine point. I mean, that's where you kind of want to be. You want to get a little bit above point eight, 
in the per touch for running back to really feel good about it. And he was good. His rookie year, he was going out there grinding. Like, people thought he was going to go out there and just steal the show and... Gio Bernard wasn't going to be anything anymore. He, I mean, Gio his, Bernard wasn't anything special, but either was he. His rookie year, it looked like he was going to be the main man in that offense. And then last year, he just laid a big egg with that second-round prize. Oh, just laid an egg. But, I mean, this fifth and sixth-round prize, I mean, he's looking spry. And if he can get back in between that two, I mean, if he can get somewhere in between that 2014 and that 2015, I mean, he's still scoring any touchdowns. I mean, he's averaging over 10 touchdowns in his first two NFL seasons. All right, we can parlay that with a little bit better yards per carry. If he can get that yards per carry back up to, like, 4.3 four and a half yards of carry. I mean, he can return easily low-end tier one running back. And I think that's very doable. Well, I mean, low-end low RB1, I mean. They've got a very good offensive line. I know it's preseason, but they have been looking awesome so far. Both backs, too, and not just... And with Gio's been looking good, too. And with the receiving core depleted, like we talked about with A.J. Green, I mean, they might not be forced to run the ball just a little bit more. I mean, Marvin Jones, Muhammad's a new Eifert's on the shelf. I mean, that's... That's, three of, top, that's three of your top. That's three of your top five targets. I think Hill stock and AJ Green stock go up. Now, let's talk some other followers here. Followers, oh, I still got them up. Double check, double check, check two. <laughs> Ladarius Green. Uh, we don't even know if this guy is I'm looking not to play football. I'm not out sure there. he's even alive anymore. Like they're like they're saying a smoke screen with this ankle injury, saying he might not even come back because this concussion issue is so his bad. His agent saying concussion, the team saying ankle. What's really going on out there? I'm scared to death. Like this guy is undraftable. There are whispers of retirement from this guy. I mean, that's a, I mean, I've been drafting the outlaw Jesse James out there. That's who I've been drafting in like the 17, 18 round. I've been roll. I've been reeling in the outlaw Jesse James. I mean, the man is six seven. I mean, as far as I'm not even convinced, even if Ladarius Green is playing football, maybe the outlaw is better than him. I mean, why wouldn't he be? I mean, Ladarius Green's been a stiff. He was supposed to be taking over for Antonio Gates for like what the last three or four seasons. I haven't seen any of that. Never saw any of that. Another stealer on the dope, uh, you know, Tavius Bryant. Tavius Bryant's on the dope, but, <laughs> I mean, he's not even really relevant to talk about. We're just going to mention his name because he's totally fallen to the depths. He's gone from being, like, a, if you're in, like, a five-keeper league, being a keeper to undrafted. Undraft. I mean, he, I mean, this guy's on. He's not even worth getting in keeper league. Yeah, he, I mean, you can't even like get him and hold on to him to maybe you know do something. It's not worth the wait unless you're in dynasty. It really isn't. Only dynasty is it worth the wait on this guy. It's crazy. We got Coates who's fallen. I still don't believe is Eli Rod. I think that's smoke and mirrors. I think that's just something to motivate Sammy Coates to like make him try to try harder and maybe take over this role. But if he can't, I mean, my goodness, his average draft position is plummeting. I'll still take Coates over Rodgers. Oh, yeah. Though. If you're going to draft one of those two guys, take Coates. I mean, he was going, what, like the 10th, 11th round, and now he's just plummeting, like, into, like, the... I don't well, even know where he's at. Yeah, he, like, geez, where did we, we get him the other day? Like, the 17th? Page here. 14th to 15th round. He's coming into the 14th or 15th round. I think that's plenty. I mean, taking. I mean, that's at when that you're taking point, flyers. you're throwing flyers anyway. And I mean, if there's anybody to take a flyer on, it'd be the guy who's playing with Ben Roethlisberger, who likes to hockey check it football all night. Another follower, Tyler Eifert. Now, this guy was the absolute beast out there. 13 touchdowns last year. He was a machine. But the guy only caught 52 balls. You know what that is? 25% of his receptions were touchdowns. And I don't think you can repeat that ever again. I mean, if his receptions and his yards aren't going up per game, I mean, there's no way he's getting 25% of his receptions for touchdowns. That's just ridiculous. And he's missing looking like at least a month this season. But his average draft position is reflecting that. I mean, you can go out there and get this guy in the 9th, 10th round. He, yeah, he's been 10th round all day. And if you're comfortable with picking up a knife for it running out like an advanced McDonald or like an outlaw Jesse James, like I was just talking about, maybe like a Will Ty or something for a first few weeks and wait till Eifert gets back out there, I mean, I'm not totally opposed to that. I mean, Eifert did return, what, was he? He was like top five tight end last year. Oh, top yeah. Three. I mean, the touchdown, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to, I mean, but 
If he, he's clearly the second receiving option in Cincinnati now that Marvin Jones and Muhammad Sanu are gone. And I think I still think he's going to be a red zone threat in that offense, but you just can't expect a quarter of his touches to be touchdowns. That's, That's insane. insane. It's just crazy. That's insane. It'll never happen to him again. I mean, he only had 52 catches for 615 yards and 13 touchdowns. I mean, what number? Which one of those numbers seems crazy to you? <laughs> I mean, it's not the 52 and the 615, I'll tell you that. What else we got there? We got some value. Kick it up, turn it around, pump out the value jams. <laughs> and then we got... That's some Kamar Aiken. One of my favorite picks late. We scooped up Kamar Aiken. When did we scoop him up? The 13th round the I other night? 13th round. He's been going about the 10th or 11th, but he has been sliding for some reason. I mean, in us. the last nine games last year, Kamar Aiken went out there and averaged you 15.7 points a week in PPR. I mean, that's that's wide receiver two all day, no matter how you slice it. And I think he's going to be kind of survival of the fittest kind of out there. Steve Smith, he's going to be talking about walking he, off the field. Steve Smith's talking abandonment. <laughs> Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace is a is a corpse. <laughs> and Bernard Perryman, I don't, I don't even, even know if he's alive. I'm not even sure if he's ever going to play football. Like, I mean, I know they're talking about him suiting up for this preseason game tonight, but I mean, I'm not convinced this guy can do anything yet. So you got to say Mike, Kamar Aiken's going to be the. I mean, Kamar Aiken, how could he not? I mean, Jesus, he's literally the only guy on the roster like, at this point. I, like. I mean, I'm a, I mean, this guy's going to lead the Ravens in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Like, and receiving touchdowns. I can't. How can he not? How can he really not? In in their tight end, they had Ben Watson. He's out for the year now. Yeah, I mean, how, how, how this guy? I mean, Ben Watson's out for a year. He had Drew Brees around with him, necromancer powers, holding them body parts together. I mean, that's what he's done. I mean, he was spent up. Drew Brees just drained him of everything he had, <laughs> drained his body, everything he had left. Superpowers are gone. Left, he left him, left him a shell, a corpse. He just <laughs> got everything good out of him and just threw him away. He's in the dumpster somewhere. I got some other value. I like some. I like some of these wide receivers. I like Trail Pryor. I know I'm not expecting really anything, but you can throw a dart at this guy. I think. 17th, 18th round throw, uh, flyer. He's I mean, so good in preseason. He's got the physique to be the man. It's just he's a Brown and he's a former quarterback, and we all know how that goes. I, I, I mean, a month ago, if you had mentioned his name to me, I'd be like, why are we even talking about this? <laughs> but, I mean, if Josh Gordon can't stay off the dope, and if Coleman and these soft tissue injuries keep, keep uh, hampering him, I mean, Terrell Pryor, I mean, he apparently has a little bit of a report with RG3 out there. I mean, they're just hucking chucking it to him. And he's, he, I mean, geez, I mean, if you told, if you were like, look at this guy, and, and I was like, who is that? And you wouldn't tell me his name, I'd be like, I, I kind of want to draft that guy. I mean, he looks pretty damn sexy out there. I mean, he's crazy looking. You know he knows those route trees because he was the next quarterback, so that's not the problem at all. I mean, if he can, if he can somehow become an every-down player for the Cleveland Browns, I mean, I'm saying, I'm saying, watch out a little bit here. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to catch no 80, 90 balls, but if he can get like 60 balls, watch out. Another guy I like Tyler Boyd, rookie that they drafted. I think it's a second round pick. And Marvin Jones is out. Sanu's out. All he has to do is beat out LaFell, and he's the second option in the receiving core there. That's it. I, mean, I don't think that's too hard to do. I mean, it, I think the LaFell. Bengals would like him to do that, too. So even if he shows any signs of being better than LaFell, I think they're just going to let him ride. LaFell has done literally next to nothing in preseason. They're pretty much just handing this job to Boyd. Oh, it's crazy. Let's get a little extra talk, not necessarily value. We got to talk some Ravens backfield. I There's know. about, what? Eight or nine backs in that backfield. <laughs> Kenneth Dixon's out. He's injured. He's done for a little while. So you can almost, he's undraftable at this point because it's so murky back there. Justin Frisettis is a supposed starter, but I'm not really into that whatsoever. Bucky Allen was kind of a PPR darling a few weeks late last year, but I'm not really buying that. I mean, I think if anybody worth the late round flyer, it is Baltimore Ravens backfield. I mean, I think this is crazy to say, but I'm talking about Terrence West. 
I mean, that is crazy. I mean, that's insanity. <laughs> but if anybody is like a late round flyer value that could totally just take this job and run with it, I mean, I'm talking Terrence West. There's just so many in the backfield. It to me, it's almost not even worth drafting any of them. Even for set, he's still going at a decently high price, and he's just been nothing besides his magical season he had a few years ago. Oh man, yeah. I mean, I'm not really, I'm not really all in on any of it. But if you're looking to throw a dart at a Raven back, be like, you must do it. I mean, if you're like all in, like, man, the pool's so bad, I'm just gonna want to throw a dart on some guy who might be able to take over a role. I go, t- I go Terrence West. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. And one more guy to talk about before we before we cash it in here. We're going to talk about Ben Roethlisberger. And I know people are saying, word, Ben Roethlisberger is a value play at quarterback, right? I mean, he's better than Philip Rivers, right? And all those other dudes toward the end of the tier ones. And I'm telling you, no. I mean, the guy only played 12 games last year. And in six of those 12 games, he had one touchdown or fewer. One touchdown three times? zero touchdowns three times and that's pretty damn gross and i know the guy had eight games over 334 yards which is pretty good but that's like matt ryan territory like getting the yards but he ain't getting you them touchdowns i mean this is i mean the guy the guy in his own team he's throwing it to him is outscoring him on a weekly basis almost i mean that's not very good and he had, he had 15 interceptions in 12 games last year I mean if he would have played 16 we'd be talking about roethlisberger leading the league in picks not blake bortles I mean, 15 picks in 12 games. That's over a pick. I mean, that's over a pick a game. If you look at the quarterbacks, he's going above. He's going above Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles all day over. Carson Palmer. Give me the Cars. Eli Manning. Oh, give me Eli over, and I'm serious. Philip Rivers. <laughs> Philip Rivers over everybody on that list, number one. But definitely all those dudes over Ben Roethlisberger. And I'm not even joking, people. Like, Ben Roethlisberger is going to get you yards. But for some reason, half the games last year, one touchdown or less. Half the, that's bad. I mean, we talked about Matt Ryan having 10 games with one or fewer touchdowns. But, I mean, this, if he would have played a full season, he would have been right there with them. I mean, Matt Ryan isn't getting drafted highly, and Ben Roethlisberger kind of still is. He's still going anywhere from like the sixth to the seventh. Yeah, I mean, that's completely unsavory. Look at, there's like four or five dudes behind him I'd rather own. We can get into the depths. Of, I mean, I'm talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick might be a better value than Ben Roethlisberger. Even Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I mean, I mean Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Cousins, you can wait on forever. I, could, I mean, this is crazy. I mean, Ben Roethlisberger getting drafted over all these dudes is completely insane to me. The numbers do not support this whatsoever. And he's an injury-prone guy, too, so it's like, what are you doing? He's injury-prone. you're in a two-quarterback league... And you draft Ben Roethlisberger, I think you're just asking for it because that means your third quarterback, he better be pretty good because he's going to be getting some action. Probably going to have to use him. <laughs> I just hope it's after Pittsburgh's bye. Otherwise, yeah. Holy hope you're going to have to use him because <laughs> you're going to be starting playing Gabbard. I, mean, you know, I would not pay the piper for this guy <laughs> whatsoever. It's unsavory. Six games with one touchdown or less. It's half his games he played. I mean, my goodness. I mean, that's bad. I mean, did J Rock even do that bad in six games? I don't think so. Did he? I mean, geez, Jay, I know Jay's a bum, but what are we talking about here? All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Again, subscribe to our videos. Like, leave a comment. We'll answer your questions. You can email us if you want, tankersfantasyfootball at gmail.com. We'll get back at you. Like it below, share and comment. We appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. We'll see you later.